What's up, Terra Kaduk? This is AJ Kasantai, and today we're going to talk about the changing concept, nature, purpose, and types of curriculum. Mus. Okay, guys. So let's talk about the two changing concept of curriculum. Number one, prescriptive. Hani bisi bini ng prescriptive. Okay. Just like the doctor and the patient relationship. So, may sakit yung pasyente. Then, the doctor will prescribe medicine okay, for the patient's medication. So, ibig sabihin, iba-iba yung sakit, iba-iba rin yung prescription or iba-iba rin yung gamot para sa pasyente. So, just like in the curriculum, okay, curricularists like John Dewey, Franklin Bobbitt, Harold Robb, Caswell and Campbell and other curricularists study how curriculum works on a different setting. That's why, iba-iba rin po ang curriculum ng bawat bansa sa atin. Hindi tayo basta-basta na lang pwedeng gumamit, gumamit ng curriculum nila because it's always patterned to the culture and society of the particular country. Now, in Philippines, we have this K-12 curriculum. Ipinattern siya sa ASEAN because we need to have a kindergarten plus 12 years of basic education so that we will become competitive in terms of educational system to our neighboring ASEAN countries. Number two, descriptive curriculum. Pag sinabi natin descriptive curriculum, tatanungin yung sarili nyo, how do we describe our society? How do we describe the needs of our educational system? How do we describe what the government needs in terms of developing human resources? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng descriptive curriculum. Descriptive curriculum is not an ideal curriculum, but a curriculum for action, a curriculum for change. Okay guys, so let's proceed to the types of curricula. So pag sinabing curricula, yan ang plural ng curriculum. Recommended curriculum. Once we say recommended curriculum, this is the curriculum proposed, drafted, and then implemented by DepEd, CHED, DOST, and TESTA. So sila po yung mga gumagawa at nagde-design ng ating curriculum. Written curriculum. Once we say written curriculum, ito po yung pinababa ng mga educational institution coming from national to regional level. Ano ba yung mga nakalagay dito? So yan yung tinatawag nating curriculum guys. So makikita nyo siya sa DepEd Memorandum or sa CHED Memorandum. Okay? Number three, thought curriculum. Pag sinabi nating thought curriculum, ito na po yung inagawa ng teachers. So thought curriculum will always start in lesson plan. Of course, lesson plan is the bread and butter of the teachers. Number four, supported curriculum. Pag sinabi nating supported curriculum, these are the references or sanggunian. For example, textbooks, journals, modules, softwares, and other medias na pwedeng makatulong to facilitate learning on a specific subject matter. Number five, Assessed curriculum. Pag sinabing assessed curriculum, ito yung mga tests, ito yung mga essays, ito yung mga rubrics na ginagamit ng teachers in order to assess the learning of the students. Number six, the learned curriculum. So this is the bottom line of the curriculum flow. Ang learned curriculum, lalabas lang yan sa ating mga learners. If the student at least satisfactorily achieve your objectives. Ito yung tinatawag natin ngayon intended learning outcomes. Okay, ibig sabihin, yung goal mo doon sa subject matter mo, yung objectives ng subject matter mo, and that means the student has learned at least something in your class. And you should be proud of it because at least one of your objectives is attained. And of course, yung pampito nating curriculum, the hidden curriculum. Ito yung pinakalove kong curriculum. Why? Hidden curriculum is not written. Hidden curriculum is a curriculum that is not prescribed. Hidden curriculum is something that we can use if there is an emergency educational problem that needs to be solved right away. So ngayon pag-usapan naman natin kung ano ba ang qualities ng isang magandang curriculum. What are the characteristics of a good curriculum? Number one, good curriculum always evolves. Yan ang ibig sabihin na ito. So, walang permanenteng curriculum. If the culture change, curriculum must be changed or at least some of the curriculum must be revised for the betterment of the learners. Number two, a good curriculum is based on the people's needs. So, kung magbabalik tanaw tayo, during 90s, wala pong course na IT. But in the 21st century, 
IT skills are very important. That's why curriculum developers proposed IT courses for tertiary level. So, mapapansin ninyo, most of the people right now do have IT skills. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, new generations right now uses laptops, computers, smartphones, cell phones. Number three, a good curriculum is democratically conceived. Ibig sabihin, if you are part of the curriculum making body, you have the privilege, you have the right to suggest and recommend in the curriculum making. Number four, a good curriculum is a result of a long-term effort. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Hindi naman ibig sabihin niya na napakatagal nung pagpaplano. Kinakailangan lang dito is proper planning, secure management, and at the same time, a sincere evaluation. So doon lang natin malaman na yung curriculum nagbigay ng katarungan sa mga pangangailangan ng ating lipidan. Number five, a good curriculum is complex. Once we say complex, there are many things incorporated. Kung walang school, kung walang teacher, kung walang sudyante, hindi mag exist yung curriculum. Kinakailangan din yun yung teacher and learning relationship. So, hindi lang poor cognitive psychomoto, yung skill na kinakailangan develop, pati affect. So, kinakailangan din dito yung guidance ng mga magulang. Yung tamang counseling program. Kaya nga may mga guidance counselor sa loob ng school. Okay? Hindi kayo ba nagtataka kung bakit may mga auxiliary positions sa loob ng school? And of course, health services. Kaya nga palaging may clinic ang school. For example, sa PE, sa physical education courses, kung merong konting accidenting nangyari, nandiyan po ang clinic. Meron pong mga nakaantabay na nurse to provide first aids. Meron din tayo mga schools and community projects, for example, na pwedeng makatulong sa uh, ating society. Is, uh, one of the examples is Brigade School. So, kinakailangan din natin ng library at laboratory kasi uh, doon tayo kukuha ng mga sources. And at the same time, kung may mga uh, activities tayo na hindi pwedeng gawin sa classroom, doon natin po gawin. So, a good curriculum always provide a good logical sequence of subject matter. Kaya dito sa educational system natin, we always have grade level. In our grade level system, using the OBE or the outcome-based instruction, may tinatawag tayo spiral curriculum. If you are teaching noun in grade 1, may noun din sa grade 2, may noun din sa grade 3. Yun nga lang, tumataas yung level ng competencies. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng logical sequence. Okay? Number 7. A good curriculum always complements and cooperates with other programs of the community. Ang kagandaan dito sa number 7 is that we need politicians. And at the same time, politician needs the school. So they go hand in hand because what an institution doesn't have can be provided or can be supported by politicians. Number 8. A good curriculum has educational quality. So number 8, to ensure educational quality on a specific institution, nagpapa-accredit sila so that malaman ng educational institution kung naatain ba nila yung mga objectives na kinakailangan to secure the quality of education based on the curriculum. That's why, uh, kung magtataka kayo, bakit may mga agencies na nagpo-provide ng ganitong uri ng accreditation, these agencies help to see whether they are implementing, managing, properly evaluating their students based on the curriculum. Number nine, a good curriculum is flexible. So, ano ibig sabihin na ito? Now, if there is a chance that stakeholders can see that there are problems what? in the curriculum, then they should the immediately incorporate changes. So, remember, the very clientele of the curriculum are the students. Kung i-compare natin siya sa business, kapag hindi mo na nabigyan ng tamang servisyo o magandang product yung customer mo, hindi na yan bibili sa iyo. Hindi na yan ulit magpapaservice sa iyo. So, parang ganun din sa educational system. So, if the institution doesn't meet the clientele satisfaction, pwedeng umalis yung estudyante sa institution. So, there are two types of process in curriculum design. So, the first process is the tap down process. So, pag sinabi natin top-down process, nagsisimula yung curriculum doon po sa national level. Uh, so, sino ba yung nasa loob ng curriculum making body? So, we have the government, we have the teachers, of course, educational institutions, okay, like CHED, okay, DepEd, DOST, and TESDA. First, we involve some non-government agencies and of course, some private institutions. Nagsisimula siya sa national level and then ibababa po natin siya sa regional level through the administrators, okay, the supervisors, the principals, and then the third phase ibababa yan sa mga teachers. Ipapatraining ng mga teachers regarding how this new curriculum works. And then the fourth, which is the bottom line, are 
students or the learners, which are the clientele of the curriculum. So, ano naman yung bottom-up process? Yung bottom-up process, ito yung mas specific at mas detalyado. Okay? So, dito nagsisimula sa pagkalap ng informasyon sa ating mga the stakeholders in the community. So, magsisimula siya sa mga bata, sa mga learners, and the parents. And then, kukunin niya ng mga teachers, papasa yan sa mga principals, the administrators, and then, dadalin doon sa national level. Daladala na yung mga requirements, lahat ng mga pangangailangan ng mga stakeholders, doon sila magbe-base para makagawa ng isang So, in terms of product, ang usual na nakikita ng ating mga kaguruan, ng ating mga teachers, is the curriculum guide or MCG. That's why in different subjects, there are different curriculum guides. So, nakalagay dun sa curriculum guides yung lahat ng intended learning outcomes, lahat ng competencies na nababagay or naayon sa bawat subject matter. So, ang last topic natin ay ang nature ng curriculum. For me, kung ano tatanungin, kasi eh, napakadaming curricular ideologies or philosophies na pwede natin incorporate sa Pilipinas. But for me, I want to suggest pragmatism and essentialism. Okay, remember, Philippines is in the third world country category. So, ibig sabihin, a country in the third world category has so many obligations to pay. Ibig sabihin, marami tayong debt. Para matulungan naman natin ang gobyerno, ang... Um, I'm suggesting that the government and our educational institutions okay, and the curriculum making body and other educational agencies na bigyan ng pansin ang pragmatism at ang essentialism. So, pag sinabi natin pragmatism, it's philosophy that teaches us how to treat a particular problem on the most practical way. Kasi yung kinakailangan natin ngayon sa new normal. Kinakailangan din natin ng essentialism. Bakit? Mas kinakailangan natin pagbigyan o pagtuunan ng pansin ang core subjects like science, language, and mathematics kasi yun ang kinakailangan sa mga panahong ito. Okay? So that's it mga ka -eduk. I hope you learned something in this episode. So tatandaan lang, in this time of pandemic, para matuto ng malapit, di-adit, pagmapaknet.